Hello, everyone, and welcome. I just wanted to let everyone know we are streaming live, so people at home are able to join us as well, and it's also being recorded. Oh, Miss Harrison. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to try and get started because the sun sets at 8.11, <laughs> so we don't want to get left in the dark out here. Okay. All right. Good evening. Thank you, parents, family members, 
faculty, administration, and Board of Education members for joining us this evening. I am Elisa Harrison, math teacher and Cum Laude Society faculty advisor. It is so great to have you all here. Last year at this time, I was hosting this event from my living room, so I am just thrilled to see you all in person on our beautiful campus. Our superintendent, Victoria Newell, will start us off with some welcome remarks this evening. Thank you, Elisa. Welcome all. I do remember your lovely fireplace though last year. So it, it is wonderful to be here in person. This evening is one of the very special evenings in Edgemont, one in which we come together to honor the 17 members of the class of 2021 who have earned the right and the privilege of being inducted into Edgemont's chapter of the Cum Laude Society. We are so happy to be here to celebrate the accomplishments of our inductees even more so over the past 15 months. For those who may not be aware of the history of the Cum Laude Society, I pause from recognizing Edgemont scholars for just a minute to give you a brief history. The society was founded in 1906 by Dr. Abram Harris, who was determined that scholastic achievement should be accorded as much recognition as that given to other accomplishments. He envisioned a society modeled after Phi Beta Kappa on the collegiate level, which would encourage and recognize true scholarship. The words arite, excellence, DK, justice, and TMA, honor, were chosen for the society's model. So tonight, first and foremost, we welcome the 17 of you senior students, and we honor you as Edgemont's distinguished scholars for the class of 2021. We welcome and appreciate your parents, guardians, your grandparents, and your families upon whose shoulders you stand. We also welcome and recognize your teachers who are inspired and inspiring those with whom you've built relationships in order to take learning risks to help you reach beyond that which you may have even imagined. Thank you for the role you have all played in sharing your passion for learning in your individual ways. So welcome all and thank you for coming together this evening to celebrate our student scholars. And now I would like to turn it back over to Miss Elisa Harrison, thank you. Our alumni speaker tonight is Shima Tafreshi. Shima joined the Edgemont community in 2006 as a freshman in high school, graduating with the class of 2010. She then attended Macaulay Honors College at Hunter College, majored in biochemistry and French literature and civilization with a minor in Spanish. She later attended University of Rochester School of Medicine and Dentistry. As a first year medical student, she discovered an interest in radiology while participating in a summer research project. She later learned about the field of interventional radiology, combining imaging guidance and minimally invasive procedures. She finished her intern year at Bronx Care Hospital and now is a diagnostic radiology, interventional radiology resident at the Northwell System, Long Island Jewish North Shore Hospital. Please welcome Shima Tafreshi. Hi everyone. Thank you for having me tonight. I'm so excited to be back on campus and feeling a little like a high schooler again. It was nice walking down those stairs. But more importantly, congrats to you guys. You made it. It's really an accomplishment to be in these seats. I know it's taken years of dedication and hard work. Cherish this moment and really soak it all in. I figured I'd share some of my experiences since graduation with you guys today and tell you about some of the lessons I learned. But some of them are generic, I'll admit it, but I found them to be true a lot of times. So lesson number one was to keep a work-life balance. Midway through college, I realized I don't really have a healthy way of managing stress. I had to stop and remind myself of things that I used to enjoy. I love learning new languages, playing the piano, playing volleyball, running, painting, etc. That was part of me that I had started to lose in the pursuit of becoming a doctor. That was the final goal, right? But I couldn't have been more wrong. I decided to take French and Spanish classes in college and actually graduated with a major in French and a minor in Spanish. In med school, I discovered yoga and joined the Medical Center Volleyball League, whose best team for four years, by the way, was called the Jawbreakers. It was a team of dentists 
who did actually almost break my jaw. But they also reminded me of how much I enjoyed playing volleyball. So just remember to keep your talents, nurture your interests outside of your main career goals, and feed your soul as well as your mind. Lesson number two, never say never and be open to trying new things. A few years back and forth, I finally decided I wanted to go to medical school. So I went to my college advisor and I told her, I want to go to med school. She looked at me and said, I have the perfect fit for you. And she suggested University of Rochester School of Medicine. My response was, no way. That's basically Canada. It's too cold for me. I'm not going there. And for people who don't know, Rochester is a five hour drive north of us. So it is basically Canada. That point still stands. But guess where I ended up for med school? University of Rochester School of Medicine. And I don't regret that decision at all. I didn't know what I was saying no to at the time and only later realized what I was missing. I ended up having an amazing experience there with some great classmates, outstanding mentors who helped me to get to where I am today. Plus Canada was kind of cool too. We made some trips there. Number, lesson number three, make sure you eat. Sometimes we think not eating is the heroic thing to do since we're all so busy and life gets in the way. But I had to learn that lesson the hard way. I was a third year med student on a pediatric emergency rotation. We had 12 hour shifts. You showed up at 7 a.m., left at 7 p.m. So I showed up at 7 a.m. after getting out of bed at 6.40. Since I love sleep more than food, it made sense at the time. I went through the day for a few hours and realized I'm starting to get dizzy, but there's no time to get food. So I figured I'd toughen it out and have a big dinner later. But as I was coming out of a patient's room, I started to feel like I'm going to faint. So I tried to play cool and just lean on a table that happened to have wheels. The next thing I know, everyone's heads are turned towards me. They put me on a patient bed, took me to one of the rooms, and now I was the patient. The nurses come in, the residents come in, the attendings came in, asking me all the questions that I knew I should be asking other patients. Um, eventually, they thought maybe it was from a cardiac condition, they were gonna do all these tests on me. And embarrassingly enough, I had to say to the attending, no, I'm just really hungry and I didn't eat anything before coming in. And he said, all right, I'll just get you some food. <laughs> and since that day, I have not missed breakfast before a shift. <laughs> Lesson number four, expect the unexpected. It was end of February of 2020 when I was on the last week of my inpatient floors. I just had a few weeks of elective and a month of vacation left. I was so happy, so excited, and so clueless of what was coming my way. Usually we take turns admission, admitting patients to our floors. So I was up for an admission and I see the patient chart says PUI, patient under investigation. I go to the nurse manager asking, what is this new diagnosis? I don't know what they're talking about. And she says, did you not hear? Our floor is of COVID floor now. PUI is a designation for patients who are suspected to have COVID-19. And so started some of the most challenging months of my life. Um, no one had taught us how to take care of patients who have COVID-19, let alone how to help, how to deal with the mental um, challenges of it. So what helped me survive was my coworkers, everyone in the hospital, and most importantly, my family. I became so close to my coworkers and co-residents in the hospital, knowing we were in it together and had to help each other through this crisis. And that brings me to the next lesson. Remember to always be kind. Last year would not have been possible without the kindness of all the hospital staff. You, if you can make or break someone's day, why not be the person that makes their day a little better? As seniors, you know the lay of the land now. But as you become freshmen again, you're going to be in a new world where you have to learn everything, adjust to college, and learn how to be an adult on your own. But don't worry. Along the way, you'll find some amazing people who will help you, help you out, show you the way, and take you under their wing. Just remember to pay it back when you become seniors again. And lastly, remember to be kind to your parents who are your biggest cheerleaders. To this day, I still need my parents' support and seek their advice. They're the first people I call. I hope you're all excited for your college experience. You guys are clearly very smart and talented and accomplished. College will just give you the medium to further develop your skills and your passions. 
I'm 100% sure you will all do amazing work. And we'll be up here speaking in 2031 cum laude ceremony one day. Thanks for having me and best of luck, you guys. Thank you very much, Shima. I now invite Dr. Calabro, Ms. Earl, Dr. Newell, and Mr. Hosier to help me present the certificates to the class of 2021. So class of 2021, the distinguished record you have made at Edgemont Junior Senior High School has won for you membership in the Cum Laude Society. This society is a fellowship of scholars whose purpose is to recognize excellence in academic work. As you pursue your education, it is our hope that you will accept the honor of membership in this society as a responsibility to make some contribution to the ongoing search for greater understanding of the world in which we live. In testimony of your admission to the Cum Laude Society by the authority of the society duly granted, we now present to you these certificates of membership. So we will announce your name, the fact that you are a member of the Edgemont class of 2021 and the college to which you will be an alumni four years from now, hopefully. Um, when you have hear your name announced, please come forward to receive, there's a lot of things you need to take back with you. Um, there is a folder explaining the Cum Laude Society. There is a certificate with your name on it and a pin. So like Phi Beta Kappa at the college level. Um, and each of you has written a note of thanks to your parents. You've already followed Shima's advice. Um, so when you return to your seats, you can give your parents that note from you. All right. Anika Bonsal. Edgemont, class of 2021. Georgetown University, class of 2025. Joshua Blaustein. Edgemont High School, class of 2021. George Washington University, class of 2025. Nora Butler. Edgemont High School, class of 2021. Georgia Institute of Technology, class of 2025. Evan Cohen. Edgemont High School, class of 2021. University of Michigan, class of 2025. Chase Fang. Edgemont High School, class of 2021. John Hopskin University, class of 2025. Shankar Gopal Krishna. Edgemont High School, class of 2021. University of Illinois, Urbana Champaign, class of 2025. Tylena Guo. Edgemont High School, class of 2021. University of California, Los Angeles, class of 2025. Jay Jang. Edgemont High School, class of 2021. Princeton University, class of 2025. Emily Jiang. Edgemont High School, class of 2021. Georgetown University, class of 2025. Isabel Corman. Edgemont High School, class of 2021. Vassar College, class of 2025. Helena Lev Kadrowska. Edgemont High School, class of 2021. University of Chicago, class of 2025. Max Luban. Edgemont High School, class of 2021. Wesleyan University, class of 2025.
Atticus Margulis Onuma. Edgemont High School, class of 2021. Yale University, class of 2025. Abigail Meyer. Edgemont High School, class of 2021. University of Wisconsin Madison, class of 2025. Uma Savla. Edgemont High School, class of 2021. Georgetown University, class of 2025. Zoe Vickery. Edgemont High School, class of 2021. University of Michigan, class of 2025. Richard Yan. Edgemont High School, class of 2021. Northwestern University, class of 2025. Congratulations to all the cum laude class of 2021. One final round of applause. Next up, we will hear from four student speakers as nominated by their peers. Our first speakers are Josh Blaustein and Evan Cohen. Josh is a trivia master and key member of the academic challenge team. And you may recognize Evan as Mr. Caldwell from Urinetown or Kaniki in Greece. Come on up, Evan and Josh. my master okay 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 step back a little okay so off all right yeah let's go off all right good evening and thank you for the honor of being here to say this year was unusual would be a massive understatement on a local level students had to adapt to virtual learning mask wearing and social distancing and before we were be begin we would first like to commend the entire class of 2021 on persevering through these challenges On a national level, this year was no less unusual. Every month seemed like a new crisis, and with each passing day, there was a new challenge to face. Over the course of the pandemic, the divide within American society has become more defined. Whether it be the growth of conspiracy theories, extremist activity, or echo chambers, we seem to have lost the ability to maintain an effective, rational, and respectful dialogue. In an effort to explore these modern dilemmas, we see it most fit to rely on a source from 2,500 years ago, the Greek philosopher Plato's Allegory of the Cave. To explain briefly, Plato proposed a thought experiment in which some prisoners are trapped in a cave facing an inner wall. There's a fire burning behind them, and from time to time, outsiders cast shadows on a wall which the captives can see. Over time, the prisoners come to define objects by their shadows. For example, if a dog sits behind them and barks, the prisoners would believe it is the shadow that barks, as they would not have seen the actual dog behind them. One day, one of these prisoners breaks free from his shackles and leaves the cave. At first, the real world is very strange to him. Because shadows had been his entire reality, objects with any texture or color didn't actually seem real. Uh, however, after some time, he adjusts to his new environment and sees these three-dimensional objects as reality and their shadows as mere reflections. The man then returns to the cave, brings his findings to the other prisoners, and tries to inform them of their misconceptions. But he's confronted with anger and aggression only. Not only do the prisoners not believe him, they don't even want to listen to his ideas. During Plato's time, there was no internet, computer, or iPhone. Now, however, we're connected to these devices and one another. Although these connections are beneficial in many ways, they make it harder to have respectful conversations, as we learned in AP Macro while discussing the Netflix documentary, The Social Dilemma. One of the premises of this documentary is that social media platforms cultivate a highly polarized political society. Due to the ease with which information can be shared and reshared, it is easy for false information to spread or be misinterpreted. This is amplified by the fact that most social media platforms have a character limit, meaning some detail must be omitted. 
Many political posts have just enough information to spark outrage, but not enough information to provide the whole story. The biases created by these character limits can also trap us in echo chambers, or environments in which people hear only ideas similar to their own. Echo chambers are dangerous because they can lead us to situations similar to the one which Plato described. When someone has different ideas or opinions than you, you may be quick to dismiss them and shun them, regardless of how valid they may be. After all, the prisoners still in the cave had every rational reason to believe that their perception was correct. They'd never been exposed to anything else. The Kumail class of 2021 is an extremely diverse cohort. We all have different goals, interests, and views. However, the one thing that unites us all is a love of learning. Throughout high school, we have all taken a wide variety of rigorous courses. However, my fellow inductees, we must recognize that learning isn't limited to the classroom. As we enter our college years, we will likely meet people from far more diverse backgrounds. To those people, please keep an open mind and a constant willingness to facilitate dialogue, learn about other perspectives, and admit when your view isn't correct. For although we may be in the light in many respects, in some cases we may unknowingly be prisoners in a cave, still in the dark to reality. Be willing to walk into the light and embrace it. To our families, friends, teachers, and administrators who have enabled us to get here, we thank you. And to the Cum Laude class of 2021, congratulations on this extraordinary achievement in reaching this milestone in your lives. We wish you the best in whatever you do next. Thank you. Thank you, Evan and Josh. Our next speaker is Jade Jang. Something you may not know about Jade is that she enjoys watching YouTube cooking videos and taught herself to crochet and code over quarantine. I also don't know what Jade looks like as a full-size person because she's been full remote all year. So come on up, Jade. Good evening, everybody. Before I begin, I would just like to congratulate us all on making it through high school. None of us could have ever expected to lose almost a year and a half to literal social distancing, and the impact that it had on our lives is undeniable. As I learned how to properly put on a mask to avoid fogging up my glasses, or try to overcome connection issues while having fun with friends over Zoom, I went from being able to go out all day to sing in front of a computer screen for meeting after meeting in a daze. And yes, I was fully remote, so <laughs> sorry, Ms. Harrison. Um, but yes, despite these changes, I think it's important to consider the idea of how we've been able to form connections despite our isolation. I'm sure we've all heard of the Edgemont bubble, where our focus on our immediate lives isolates us from our outside events. But with the pandemic and so much of what has been happening in this country and the world, we have been pushed to pay attention to news that is happening outside of our bubble. I've been deeply troubled when I read about the murders of Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Elijah McClain, Ahmaud Arbery, and countless others at the hands of a corrupt system. I was in class while I learned about how a police officer described a terrorist who shot six Asian women as someone who just had a bad day. Even now, I anxiously pay attention to the current Israeli and Palestinian conflicts and the countless deaths that are being caused. In the face of all this bad news, it's easy to experience information overload. It can seem frustrating and terrifying when it feels like we're just high school students, when the problems seem this big and we just feel extremely, extremely small. But over quarantine, I've been doing something other than just quaking with existential dread, and that is reading. Recently, I finished a book called A Thousand Plateaus by two authors named Deleuze and Guattari. In it, the authors discuss assemblage theory, which is about how objects can be redefined through their relationships. Someone described it to me as how a bicycle on its own might just be a bicycle, but a bicycle in garbage is trash, while a bicycle museum can become art. My point is, is that all these relationships, the assemblages that we form, no matter how small they may seem, can still make an impact on who we are and what we do. Think of the connections we have formed with teachers and parents who have all encouraged and supported us as we find our direction in life. Think of what the community of cum laude can do in the future as a group defined by our shared appreciation of education when we move on to college and begin to act on what we have learned. 
Think of how learning about the world and talking to friends about it will influence what we'll pursue and the relationships we'll build. And whether we just make calls for political candidates or start a difficult conversation with relatives, we can start a movement towards change. In conclusion, I would like to once again emphasize the importance of our relationships, the ones we have made so far, and the potential relationships we'll form in the future. No matter how far we may go, I look forward to seeing what we can accomplish. Thank you so much, and congratulations to the Kum Lao class of 2021. Thank you, Jade. And our final speaker this evening is Richard Yan. Richard enjoys making YouTube videos on his channel, Shredder FTW. Hopefully, you can go there and view his latest creative endeavor, the calculus parody video, Riemann Sums. Good evening. It's an honor to be here to be part of the Cum Laude class of 2021 and to be speaking to you all tonight. My fellow inductees, how crazy is it that we're done with high school? I mean, I don't know about you all, but I still feel like a 10th grader. How are we already going to college soon? How are some of us 18? I mean, I still sprint up the stairs when I shut the lights in my basement because I think there's a demon behind me. Time is a funny thing. It's so slow in the moment and especially so during online classes. Though I did move curiously fast during my APs this year. Um, but in retrospect, it really flies. And speaking of time, they only gave me five minutes up here, so I'm gonna get to it. When I sat down to write the speech and reflected on my years here at Edgemont, the emotion I felt the most by far was gratitude. I'm thankful for the experiences I've had, the friends I've made, and the lessons I've learned. As some of you may know, I've been running a YouTube channel for quite some time now. And on YouTube, we have a saying, none of it would be possible without the fans. We as the creators may put in the work, but it's our fans who really keep us motivated and help us reach higher and higher milestones. And I know some of you are looking at me now thinking, Richard, you know, what does this have to do with us? We're not YouTubers. We don't have fans. Are you sure about that? Look around you and let me ask you this. What is a fan? We might think of fans as screaming teenage girls at a Justin Bieber concert, but in reality, a fan is just someone who supports you. My fellow inductees, we all have more fans than we know. And so today, as we celebrate our achievements, let's not forget to thank our supporters. First, to our parents, our biggest fans since day one. You inspire us to work hard, to be kind, and to go chase our wildest dreams. We're only able to participate in so many activities and spend countless hours studying because you make us dinner, you fold our clothes, and you drive us wherever we need to go. Sometimes we butt heads because whether we like it or not, you guys are the ones that tell us to do the hard things in life first, so that we have time for the good things. So thank you. We would not be the people we are today without you, figuratively and literally. Next, to our friends. You remind us to play hard, to laugh like we mean it, and to enjoy the little things in life. The experiences we share with you keep us excited for the next day. When I look back on my high school years in 30, 40 years from now, I'm going to remember the thrill of being backstage on opening nights, the joy of winning first place with the chamber choir, and the combined screams of our entire grade on El Toro. I know for a fact I would not be standing here today if not for the class notes my friends lent me whenever I was out sick, and for the cram sessions that we shared the nights before any of our AP bio or physics exams. Thank you. Thank you. And lastly, to our teachers, the supporters that are too often overlooked. My thanks to Ms. Morse and Mr. C, who sparked my passion for music and taught me how to share it with others. To Mr. Baum, who once stayed at school for an extra 30 minutes, to answer my questions, even though I had confused his extra help times. To Ms. Fisher, who always asked me how I'm doing and volunteered her own time to read over and help me edit my college essays. I could go on, but then we'd really be here all night. We, the Cum Laude class of 2021, couldn't have done what we've done without you all behind us, supporting us, cheering for us. This, graduating high school, is only the beginning. We've got so much more to see and so much more to give. So as we move on to the next chapter of our lives, let's keep dreaming keep chasing and keep achieving. And let us never forget our fans, our parents, friends, and mentors, the people who have and will always pave the way for our success. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Richard, and thank you to all of our speakers tonight. And one last congratulations to the cum laude class of 2021. We, your teachers, are so proud of each of you and your accomplishments in education. Thank you also to Superintendent Newell, Principal Hosier, Dr. Clabro, and Ms. Earl for helping with the ceremony. Special thanks to Maggie Cook in the guidance office for printing all of the invitations, certificates, and programs, and Jonathan Espinoza for providing the live stream and recording. We hope that each of you will continue to embody the concepts stated in the cum laude motto, arete dike time, excellence, justice, and honor. Traditionally, after the ceremony, we eat a cake that has each inductee's name on it. In lieu of shared food in this time of COVID, we have personalized cookies. So please go to the refreshment table and find the cookie with your name on it. There are chocolate chip cookies for the rest of us. And um, you are welcome to take home a sunflower as well, if you would like. Thank you all for coming and enjoy the rest of the evening. Excellent job.